the first time I saw footage of Dead Space, something would surprise me. When Isaac took damage, the color of his spine changed color and shrank. It was then that I realized that the bar on his back was his health bar. Something about this small detail would intrigue me a lot, but I wouldn't hear any other person talk about it. I thought that it was a pretty interesting way to display health. I would come to learn that what Dead Space did with its UI was something called Diegetic UI. Diegetic UI is basically when menus or information is conveyed within the actual game world instead of something only visible to the player. With Dead Space, the characters in the world can see Isaac's health bar. It's not just some floating bar outside the character's cone of vision. It's even expanded upon when it's seen on other characters, really adding to the world building of Dead Space. Everyone is used to health being told to us with UI as the standard in games, but displaying information in a diegetic way can really improve immersion of a game. I think immersion is often overlooked when it comes to games. There's so many examples of games where the screen is cluttered with stuff that seems overwhelming to the average spectator, especially RTS games or MOBAs. If you could cut down on that clutter into the bare minimum amount of UI, you'd probably get reminded less that you're actually playing a video game. If it's a complicated game that needs to convey large amounts of information to the player, it's going to be harder to convey with diegetic elements, and it's going to require more effort, require sacrifice to the game design, or downright not work. But for the vast majority of games, they could definitely help with cleaning up clutter on screen and having a more intuitive way to understand information. Why not experiment, right? The indie game Limbo was actually supposed to have an inventory system and HUD elements, but the devs decided against it because it would take away from the immersive atmosphere of the game. Instead, the game was simplified to only having the ability to grab objects. But what if you want an inventory? In various roguelikes, like The Binding of Isaac and Risk of Rain 2, instead of having an inventory that shows what specific items you have, it changes the appearance of your character to show which items you have. To achieve a diegetic HUD, you might have to change some part of your game in order to simplify it, but if you really want to achieve a certain mechanic, you don't have to throw it away necessarily. You can still represent an inventory in other ways, but I get it if you have a really niche mechanic or just don't want your UI to be diegetic. I'll present some examples of diegetic HUDs that I believe were achieved well, and some that I think feel fake in a way. First, Scorn. Although this isn't disabled by default, you can play the game without a HUD, and a lot of information is still understandable. The game state is conveyed to you diegetically like with your healing items and ammo. A lot of the game is based around immersing yourself in this foreign world, and it has a really amazing atmosphere. So the diegetic elements not only highlight that, but do it in a gross and biopunk way. Imagine how boring it would be if we got rid of these notches on the weapon for ammo and just added a piece of text in the corner for ammo in your clip and reserves. Imagine you had text somewhere else telling you how many times you could heal. Another good example would be in the Call of Duty series. When you take damage, a splatter of blood appears on your screen. In a game that doesn't use health bars, that's one quick and easy way to notify the player when you're being attacked. And hell, I've even used this for my games. One example that I believe feels like fake diegetic UI is in Alone in the Dark 2, where your inventory was in your jacket. Don't get me wrong. It's good UI and it looks cool, but to serve an absolute diegetic purpose, it doesn't really fulfill it. You have things in your inventory highlight in white when you hover over them with your hands. There's also these button prompts and this text on screen. It seems to run contradictory to the purpose of a diegetic HUD. 
You wouldn't exactly see this in real life. What I think they could have done to make it fully diegetic was to firmly establish that there is a certain key to select or interact, so they wouldn't need the button prompts. They could also get rid of the highlighting and have the hand lurping to different locations in your jacket be as indication for which item you are selecting. The same can be said for the Forest series, where it has the same issue I described. I believe that players will only become confused with unintuitive or confusing design. This issue can be addressed using diegetic UI. I believe that diegetic HUD elements are inherently more intuitive to understand because it draws parallels to a certain design cue called skeuomorphism. Look at the icons on your phone. Some of them probably show icons of physical versions of the technology they represent. Think of the camera app or the phone app. The important thing to take away is that skeuomorphic design makes these apps easier to infer their purpose at a glance. Because these derive familiarity from things that almost everyone knows. So even if you knew absolutely nothing about technology, you could still recognize that the phone app is used to call people. See where I'm going with this? Although some objects and games may not exist in the real world, good design will make the player understand what they're interacting with. Like maybe it's a gun or a big smartwatch. VR games usually have diegetic UI because it's more immersive. Although VR is kind of niche as of the writing of this video, I think when they become more popular in the future, there's gonna be more examples of diegetic UI. But as of now, there's a few examples that I can think of at the top of my head. In Bone Lab, there's a device that the player wears on their arm, and they can change their avatar. You can cycle through them, and you can get this preview with this hologram. Hey, wait a minute. Also in Half-Life Alex, your health is displayed on your gravity gloves. And the gravity gloves themselves light themselves up, and the object they have tethered when you have your hand in a fist. In order to bring the object towards you, you have to physically move your hand back quickly, which seems more intuitive than the button press. Before you bring up the fact that Half-Life Alex's hands are not really diegetic because they're disembodied, within Valve's developer commentary, they found that playtesters didn't actually mind it that much. It did not take much away from the immersion because they just forgot their hands were disembodied. I think these mechanics are really cool, and it just shows the potential of diegetic UI and diegetic game elements in general. Diegetic UI is really underappreciated, and I wish it would appear more in games. If you're a developer out there, maybe give it a try. It took me a while to make this video because I was actually working on a small game. It's now released on itch.io, so I got back to making this video. This video was so hard to make due to diegetic elements being such a niche topic in games. If you enjoyed this video, you can like, share, and subscribe. See ya.